Hi guys and welcome back to the Crochet Toy YouTube channel. In today's video I'm dressed slightly differently and that's because I'm doing a costume test run for Birmingham Comic Con which I will be at so I'm planning on releasing this video the weekend that I'm there so I'll be there on the Saturday and Sunday if any of you guys are there as well. Um, but today I'm dressed up as Maya Faye from Ace Attorney so this is one of my favourite game series of all time and I didn't just decide to randomly film this intro in my costume it's because I've actually done a crochet pattern from Ace Attorney and I'm planning on bringing the um, the items with me to Comic Con as well so that I can sort of carry them around with me. So in today's video I'm going to be showing you a crochet pattern for uh, the blue badger from Ace Attorney and then also I've done a pink badger version too so you can make whichever one you want. Uh, in the video I do the pink badger but I do tell you what you would need to do differently if you're going to do the blue badger. Most of the pattern is completely the same for both other than obviously you can see that the, the belt sort of detail at the front, um, the pink badger just has a white sash whereas the blue badger has two brown belt pieces and then also the pink badger has a bow and some eyelashes as well which the blue badger doesn't have but other than that they're pretty much identical um so yeah if you're interested in finding out how to make these then keep watching so for both variations of the badger you'll be needing cream yellow white and black aran yarn then if you're making the blue badger you'll also need blue and dark brown and if you're making the pink you'll need pink and hot pink then you'll also be needing some black embroidery thread for both this is for adding the mouth details and then also adding the eyelashes for pink badger you'll need your crochet hook i've got a four millimeter crochet hook to go with my aran weight yarn but if you're using heavier or lighter weight of a yarn you can size up or down as required you're needing some scissors your yarn needle for sewing pieces together, a stitch marker to help you uh, keep your place as you're working in the round, you'll need a small bit of fabric glue for gluing the mouth in the position that you want, you'll be needing some stuffing, you'll need more than this but this is just to demonstrate, and then finally I would recommend that you have some pins for pinning things in place as you're sewing as well. We're going to start by making the three spikes at the top of the head so if you're making the blue badger use blue yarn for this and if you're making the pink badger use pink so I'm making pink so I'm going to use my pink yarn and we're going to start off by doing three single crochets in a magic circle for round one. Just pull on the tail to close that. And then for round two, we're going to do a single crochet to start with. And this is quite tight, so just take your time in this round. So I'm doing a single crochet. Then I'm going to do an increase in the next stitch. So work two single crochets in the stitch. And then finally I'm going to finish off with a single crochet. So that's the end of round two, you should have four single crochets at the end of the round and what I like to do at this point is to just insert the other side of my crochet hook into what I've just made and kind of smooth it over the uh, crochet hook so that it creates that pointed appearance at the top of the spike. I've just snipped the yarn tail as I'd already crocheted over it so it was secure in place and it was fine for me to do that. Now what I'm going to do is move on to round three. So in round three you're just going to increase all the way around. That's going to get you up to eight single crochets at the end of the round and I'm going to start using my stitch marker now. You can of course use this in every round. I just tend to use it in rounds where I know I'm probably going to lose track of where the round started. Again, this round is quite tight, so just take your time. It gets a lot easier after this round. Okay, so at the end of round three, you should have eight single crochets all the way around. Just going to talk you through the remaining rounds for the spike, as it's just a mixture of single crochets and increases in each round now, which hopefully you now know how to do. 
So for round four, you're just going to single crochet all the way around. That should be eight single crochets. Round five, single crochet increase and repeat that pattern three more times to get you up to 12 single crochets at the end of the round. Round six, single crochet all the way around. Round seven, two single crochet increase, repeat three more times to get you up to 16 single crochets at the end of the round. Then round eight, single crochet all the way around. I'll meet you when you've completed round eight and tell you what to do next. I've completed round eight and this is what it looks like. So at this point, you're just going to want to cut your yarn. Don't worry about leaving a tail for sewing or anything like that. Just leave a very short tail so that we can uh, crochet over this and secure this in place. And it's completely up to you if you want to slip stitch into the next stitch to finish off in a slightly um, more secure way, then you can do that. But personally, I'm just going to leave it like this and pull that yarn tail through. And then I'm ready to uh, crochet over that in a later round when we're going to join all of the spikes together so what you're going to want to do now is repeat rounds one to eight twice more so you're going to want to make two more spikes but when you've made your third spike come back here and don't cut your yarn leave your yarn on the hook and we're going to actually join all of those three spikes together in round nine so come back when you've got two spikes that are off the hook and one spike that's still on your hook so I've got my three spikes now and I'm ready to join them all together in round nine. So we're going to start off by doing eight single crochets in the spike currently on our hook. And you're definitely going to want to be using your stitch marker for this round. So I'm going to work eight single crochets. Okay, then you're going to select one of your other spikes and work eight single crochets into that one. I'm going to start by crocheting, so I'm going to skip this next single crochet after the final um, single crochet that we did. I'm going to work in this one next. I find this gets the best um, kind of neatest finish, but it's not the end of the world which um, single crochet you start in. So I'm going to just do one and then I'm going to do seven more. So I've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I need to do one more. And then I'm going to work into my final spike and I'm going to work 16 single crochets around this spike. And once again, I'm going to start from, so I'm going to skip this single crochet, go into this one and start from this one. This is 14, 15, and on the 16th one, I'm going to make sure to crochet over this tail. So that's 16. Then I'm going to go back to this middle spike and work eight single crochets into it. So to find where to start, I know that this is going to be the final single crochet, so I'm going to just count back from it. So one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it will be this one. I'm going to just tighten up my yarn first and then. So one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, and then eight. And once again, I'm going to work over that yarn tail. So just like that. 
and then all that's left to do is work eight single crochets into the first spike and once again I'm just going to count back to um, be certain which single crochet I need to work in first so I know this one's going to be the last one so I'll go one two three four five six seven eight so I know it's going to be this one and eight so that's the end of round nine all your spikes should be joined together now and you should have 48 single crochets all the way around in round 10 we're going to be doing some decreasing so i'll probably do round 10 with you then i'll probably just talk you through the remaining rounds until we get to the point where we need to stuff the head as it will be stitches that you've done already in all of those rounds so it'll just be a mixture of single crochets and decreases um, after round 10 until we need to stuff so in round 10 we're going to start off by doing seven single crochets and again, I would recommend using your stitch marker because these aren't uniform rounds. The decreases are in slightly different places each time. So it just helps to um, mark that first single crochet so you don't lose track of what you're doing. Four, five, six, seven, then we're going to work a decrease so we're going to start off as if we're doing a normal single crochet like this but instead of yarning over and pulling through both loops on our hook we're instead going to go into the next single crochet and pull up a loop then yarn over and pull through all three loops like that then we're going to be doing six single crochets Then another decrease. And hopefully you're, you're kind of seeing this, but what we're doing is we're decreasing in the spaces where the spikes are um, close to each other. So we're kind of decreasing in the gaps between the spikes and that just um, allows us to get the proper shape that we want for the head. So now what we're going to be doing is 14 single crochets. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Then we're going to decrease. Then we're going to work another six single crochets. Then another decrease. Then finally we're going to work seven single crochets. Okay, so that's round 10 complete. You should have 44 single crochets now as we've done four decreases in this round. So as mentioned, I'm just going to talk you through the next few rounds as it's just mixtures of single crochets and decreases in each round. So for round 11, you're going to do seven single crochet decrease, five single crochet decrease, 13 single crochet decrease, five single crochet decrease, six single crochet decrease, and that'll get you down to 40 single crochets. Then for round 12, you're going to do six single crochet decrease, five single crochet decrease, 11 single crochet decrease, five single crochet decrease, five single crochet, and that'll get you down to 36 single crochets. Then for rounds 13 to 18, you're just going to single crochet all the way around. Then round 19, you're going to do four single crochet decrease and repeat five more times to get you down to 30 single crochets. So from round 19, you're going to be doing standard um, six increment decrease rounds. 
Then round 20, you're going to do three single crochet decrease, repeat five more times to get you down to 24 single crochets. Then round 21, two single crochet decrease, repeat five more times to get you down to 18 single crochets. So I'll meet you at the end of round 21, as this is then when we need to stuff the head. I reached the end of round 21 and added some stuffing to the head as you can see. I'm just going to talk you through the next few rounds which will start to create the body um, of the badger. So these again aren't anything uh, different in these rounds that you haven't already done. It will just be mixtures of single crochets and some increases as well. So for round 22 you're just going to single crochet all the way around so that should be 18 single crochets. Round 23, you're going to do two single crochet increase and repeat five more times to get you up to 24 single crochets. Then rounds 24 to 33, so that's 10 rounds in total. You're just going to single crochet all the way around. And I'll meet you when you finish round 33, as we're then going to split off uh, to make the two legs. So once you've completed round 33, hopefully you'll have something that looks a bit like this. So hopefully you can see it kind of taking shape. Um, now after you finish round 33 you just want to do one additional single crochet and that just means that we've moved to kind of the centre point here as you can see of the body and that just means that we're in the right position to start crocheting the legs so yeah just do one additional single crochet and uh, also at this point you're going to want to add some stuffing to the body as well so I'm just going to stuff the body and then I'll come back and show you how to make the legs. So I've added my stuffing to the body and now I'm ready to start crocheting the legs. So we're going to do obviously one leg at a time. So for this first leg we're going to start off by just working 12 single crochets and you are going to want to mark that first single crochet you do just so you can remember where the leg started. So that's one, I'm going to do 11 more. Okay, so I've done 12, so that's round one complete. Then for round two, we're obviously going to start off in the first single crochet that we did, and that's how we're going to split off the um, two legs at this point. Um, and in round two, we're going to be doing four single crochet decrease, four single crochet decrease. So I'll do that with you now. So when you do that first single crochet of round two, you're going to want to get it um, as tight as you can, ideally, so there's not big gaps so just like that so that's one i'm going to mark that again then i'm going to do three more and then a decrease so two three then I'm going to do a decrease and then do that all again so one two three four and then a decrease So at the end of round two, you should have um, a separate round that you've created for this leg specifically, and you should have 10 single crochets all the way around. Now for rounds three to eight, so six rounds in total, you're just going to single crochet all the way around. So I'll meet you when you've completed round eight. I've completed round eight and I've added my stuffing to the leg. So you're going to want to stuff yours as well if you haven't yet. And then we're just going to do one final round, which is round nine. So we're going to, in this round, just decrease all the way around. So that should be five decreases in total.
Okay, then you're just going to cut your yarn, leaving a little bit of a tail. And then we can close up the hole with our yarn needle. So to close up the hole, I'm going to weave my yarn needle through the front loops of each of those um, final five stitches that we just did. And I'm going to pull as I weave it through. And then I'm going to insert my needle and just weave that yarn tail through the leg and give it a little tug as well to try and um, flatten out the bottom of the leg a little bit and then I'm going to cut that. So that's our first leg complete. Now we need to reattach our yarn and do the second one. So for the second leg, you're going to find where you did your final single crochet of round one for the first leg. And I can see it's in this stitch because you can see that this um, single crochet has been worked into this single crochet here. So I know that the next one after that is where I want to reattach my yarn. So that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm simply going to work... 12 single crochets again for round one and if you're still not 100% confident about where you've reattached your yarn you can just um, I'll just remove this to show you but you can count the stitches to make sure you've got 12 from where you're starting and that means that you've attached them to the right single crochet so if I count this one two three four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, 12. So you can see if I start in that one, I'll have 12 single crochets, which is exactly what we want. So yes, yeah, so you're going to reattach into that stitch, work your 12 single crochets in round one like you did for the other leg, and you're going to work all of the other rounds exactly the same. So I'll just remind you of what those were. So for round two, you're going to do four single crochet decrease, four single crochet decrease to get you down to 10 single crochets, rounds three to eight single crochet all the way around, then stuff the leg, then in round nine, decrease all the way around, and then cut your yarn and close up the hole. So I'll meet you when you've done your second leg, and I'll then show you how to close up any remaining gap that you have between the legs. So I finished both my legs now and this is what it's looking like. As you can see there is a gap still between the legs so um, you could leave it if you want to if you know that no one's going to be like playing with this or anything that's just going to be on display then I guess you can't really see it so it's not the end of the world but if you want to close it up then just get a length of your um, pink or your blue whichever colour you're using for um, whichever badger you're doing and then just thread it through your yarn needle and then we'll close up the hole like this just by whip stitching along just like that and then you can just weave those yarn tails through the leg or the body just to secure them in place and then you can snip them so I'm just going to do this one as well and I'm just going to cut those okay so now we've got our main head body and legs complete we're going to move on to making the arms next I've gone ahead and made one of the arms, this is what it's going to look like. Let's do the other one together now. So I'm going to start off by doing four single crochets in a magic circle in my main body colour. So that's round one then for round two you're just going to increase all the way around and that'll get you up to eight single crochets at the end of the round Okay, 
okay so at the end of round two you should have eight single crochets all the way around so now for rounds three to ten so eight rounds in total you're just going to single crochet all the way around so i'll meet you when you've completed round 10 and show you how to finish off the arm I've just finished round 10 and I've stuffed my arm so now to finish off we're just going to do four slip stitches across the top working uh, in both sides of the arm to kind of close off the top of the arm. Okay then cut your yarn making sure you leave a tail long enough for sewing. And then you can just weave that yarn tail through like this. So once you've got two arms, come back and I'll show you how to sew these to the body. So I've got one of my arms and I've placed it at the side of the body and I'm just going to start by whip stitching along the top to sew the arm down. And you can use pins if you want to help keep things in place, um, but I'm just going to be holding it in place with my hand. Okay, so I've done my four whip stitches along the top. Before I move on any further, I'm just going to check I'm still happy with the positioning of that. And I think I am, so that's fine. Then I'm going to uh, do a couple of whip stitches at the back of the arm. And I'll also do a couple at the front as well, just to secure it down a bit better. Okay, so I'm just going to move the yarn tail back to the front of the arm and then sew down a few stitches at the front as well. So, one, two, and then I might do a third, I'll just check how that looks, yeah, maybe one more. So that's the third one, like that, and then I'll just weave that yarn tail through to the back and then you can snip that and that's how it looks like when one of the arms is sewn down. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the other side, but obviously I won't show you because it's exactly um, all the same steps. Um, and then once we've done that, the next thing I think we'll move on to is making the little um, bells to go on the top of the head. Just wanted to show you what it looks like when I've got both of the arms sewn down. So yeah, as I mentioned, we're now going to be making the little bells to go on the top of the head. So you're going to need your yellow yarn for this. So these are really simple to make. For round one, you're just going to do five single crochets in a magic circle. And then just pull on that yarn tail to close up the hole. Then for round two, you're just going to single crochet all the way around. So that should just be five single crochets for round two. So one two, three, four, and five. And if there's still a little bit of a hole, like you can see there is for mine, just pull on that tail again to, to tighten it up. And there you go, the hole's disappeared. So now I'm just gonna cut my yarn, leaving a tail long enough for sewing. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try and kind of shape this a little bit so I'm just going to get the other end of my crochet hook and sort of smooth it over that then we're going to just close up the hole kind of like we would do normally except for these bells you're going to go into both loops rather than just going into the front loop only and I'm going to leave this tail because I'm going to use it to kind of stuff the um, bell a little bit so I'm going to leave that for now but I'm just going to go into each of those five single crochets and pull as I do so. so this is the third one and at this point I'm going to try and kind of push that tail inside 
the bow I'm going to use my scissors for it but you can use a crochet hook or whatever and just like that that just adds a bit of stuffing to it now I'm going to go back to closing up the hole so I just did I just did this one so I'm going to go into this one next and then I'm going to finally go into this one and then just pull very very tightly and that should close it up uh, it doesn't matter if it's not 100% perfectly closed because we're going to be sewing this to the, the head anyway like this. So you're going to want to make three of these obviously and then come back once you've done that and I'll show you how to sew them to the head. As you can see I've sewn down two of the bells and I'm going to do the other one with you now. So I've just got my yarn needle and the bell here. So I'm just going to start off by weaving my yarn needle through one of the yellow stitches then i'm going to position this on the top of the one of the remaining um, head spikes and i'm going to turn it so that i'm starting um, my sewing from the back rather than the front just because this will probably be the less neat side so i'd rather have that at the back rather than the front then i'm just gonna whip stitch all the way around just to sew this piece down and you can use a pin if you want to pin it in place while you're doing this but I find because it's a small piece it's easy enough to just hold it with my hand. So nearly done I'll do one or two more and that will do probably one more and then I'll just check from the front that that looks okay yep I think that looks fine so I'm just going to weave my yarn tail through the bell and then cut that Okay, so once you've sewn down all three of the bells to the top of the head spikes, the next thing that we're going to do is grab our cream yarn to make the face and the body details. We're going to start off by making the face piece. This is made in cream regardless of whether you're making the pink or blue badger and we're going to be working in rows for this. So for row one we're going to start off by chaining 11. And then we're just going to single crochet across the chain starting from the second chain from hook which would be this one so you can work into the front loops if you want like normal or you can work into the back loops i generally prefer to work into the back loops so that's what i'm going to do here but it doesn't make a massive difference it just slightly changes how uh, the first row looks so i'm just going to work 10 single crochets across the chain And now that I've got about halfway down the chain, I'm going to start crocheting over this tail as well. so that's my 10 single crochets and then I'm just going to pull on this um, tail as well just to get rid of that bit at the end there so just gently pull on that and that's fine so that's row one complete and you should have 10 single crochets at the end of the row in row two we're going to be doing some increases so we're always going to start our row with a chain one and turning our work and then for row two, we're going to be doing an increase, eight single crochets, and then another increase. So that will bring us up to 12 single crochets at the end of the row.
Okay, so that's row tw row two complete, and I've got twelve single crochets. So now for rows three to seven, you're just going to chain one, turn and single crochet across for each row. So that'll be five rows in total. And I'll meet you when you finish row seven. And you can also, if you've crocheted over this tail, you can cut it at this point just to get it out of the way. So I'll meet you when you're about to start row eight. So I've just finished row seven. This is what it looks like. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create two kind of semicircle um, pieces so that it it's the um, appearance of where the eyes will go. So I'm going to chain one and turn. And for row eight, we're just simply going to be doing six single crochets and then stopping. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're going to chain one, turn. Then for row nine, we're going to do a decrease. Then two single crochets, then another decrease. Then for row 10, we're going to chain one, turn, and we're going to do two decreases. Then I'm going to cut my yarn, leaving quite a long tail for sewing because you're going to need to sew all the way around this face piece. So you want to make sure that you leave enough yarn for that. And then we're going to reattach our cream yarn again and do the same thing on this other side. So I'm just going to repeat all of that again. So I'm going to reattach my cream yarn into the single crochet after the sixth single crochet or the final single crochet we did in row eight previously. And then, like I said, I'm going to repeat all that again. So I'm going to do six single crochets to start with. It should take me to the end of the row. Then I'm going to chain one, turn and do a decrease, two single crochets and another decrease. Then chain one, turn and do two decreases. Then I'm just going to cut my yarn. I don't need to leave a long tail this side because I've already got one on the other side. So I'm just going to leave a short tail and then I'll do some knotting on the, um, the other side that isn't going to be showing just to get rid of this tail so I'll just do a knot here and then weave the yarn tail through another loop and then probably snip it leaving a little bit of the tail left over because that'll be hidden like that okay so once you've done that we're ready to sew this down to the head like this so I'm going to pin it in place and then I'm going to start sewing I've actually just realized I've knotted this piece on the wrong side so this should actually be the front side of my work and this should be the back side and the reason I know this is because you can see the front here this part along the bottom is a lot neater compared to on this side you can see um, the difference there so it's not the end of the world you could sew it down like this if you wanted to and you really wouldn't be able to tell but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how I would go about correcting what I've done here because it might be useful for you to know so I'm literally just going to undo the knot that I did on this side and then I'm going to uh, move it to the other side of my work instead so there we go that wasn't too bad just like that and then I'm gonna go and do a knot on this side instead so yeah if I'd have done a lot of knots and it would have been a lot of work for me to undo them all I would have just 
sewn it um, with the wrong side showing because like I say you can't really tell a massive difference but seeing as it was easy enough for me to fix I thought I'd just show you so there we go so now I'm, I can sew it down with this side showing I've pinned the face down now and I'm just going to start um, whip stitching all the way around to sew this down I would recommend that you pin this piece I always recommend that you pin flat pieces at the very least because uh it, it helps to keep them in place and it's much easier than trying to hold on to this while you're sewing around so I'm just gonna go all the way around just whip stitching so yeah I'll just continue doing that until I've gone all the way around and I'll meet you when I finish that finished sewing the face down so this is what it looks like I'm just going to weave the yarn tail through the face and then cut that so the next thing we're going to do is make a similar piece that's going to go on the body so grab your cream yarn again and let's get started with that so this time we're going to start by chaining seven And then single crocheting across the chain starting from that second chain from hook again and as with before I'm going to work in the back loops Okay, I'm just gonna pull on that tail a little bit and that is the end of the first row and you should have six single crochets across so I'm just going to talk you through the remaining rows as they're not much different to what we did for the face so for row two you're going to do chain one turn increase four single crochet increase to get you up to eight single crochets at the end of the row rows three to six chain one turn single crochet across row seven chain one turn decrease four single crochet decrease to get you down to six single crochets at the end of the row then finally row eight chain one turn decrease across to get you down to three single crochets at the end of the row i'll meet you when you finish row eight as we'll then need to sew this part to the body so i've just completed row eight this is what the piece looks like so now i'm just going to cut my yarn again leaving a fairly long tail because we're going to need to sew this to the body and I'm just going to pull that yarn tail through like this so this is the piece then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pin this now to the body and I'm going to try and make sure that I connect up um, this top row here and this is actually row one is at the top of the body and the final row that we did there is at the bottom so I'm just going to make sure that I pin these close together because I don't want there to be a gap between the the face piece and uh, the body piece that we're going to sew down now so I'll just pin those and then I'll start the sewing with you so I've pinned the piece down I'm just going to be um, whip stitching around to sew it down in the same way that I did for the face piece Okay, so I'm just going to be doing that all the way around and I'll meet you when I finish that. Just wanted to show you that when I get to this point and I'm sewing the top row, I am going to sew into the face so that, as I mentioned before, there's no gap between the two. So I'm going to go along like that, just sewing into stitches in the face piece. So yeah, I just thought I'd show you that. 
finished sewing down this piece as well so I'm just going to weave the yarn tail through the body and then cut that. Okay so now we are ready to move on and what we're going to make next is we're going to be making the eyes to be sewn onto the face piece here. I've gone ahead and made one of the eyes, so this is what it looks like, and I'm going to do the other one with you now, so obviously you're going to need your black and white yarn for this. So for the first round, we're actually going to be working around a foundation chain for this, and that is just because we want to create this kind of oval shape to the eye rather than it being a complete circle, so this is the best way to achieve that look. So I'm going to start off with my black yarn, and I'm going to chain three to start with. And then what I'm going to be doing is, so starting from the second chain from hook, I'm going to do one single crochet to start with. And again, you can work in the front loops if you want to, or the back loops. I'm going to work in these back loops. So I'm going to do a single crochet. And then in the second chain, I'm going to do an increase. So I'm going to work two single crochets into that. Then all I'm going to do is turn my work and start working on the other side of the foundation chain as well. So I'm going to do the exact same thing again. I'm going to start with a single crochet and then I'm going to do an increase. And as you can see, I'm working over that tail as well, just so that that's secured in place. I'm just going to pull on that tail as well to get rid of that bump at the end. So at the end of the first round, you should have six single crochets, one, two, three, four, five, six. I know it's a little bit trickier to see it with the black. I'm going to cut my black tail now just to get that out of the way. Um, and actually what we're going to be doing is we're going to be changing colour to white. So what I'm going to do, because I've, I've just realised that I need to change colour to white, I'm just going to undo that final single crochet that I just did and I'm going to redo that. But this time I'm going to pull through in white instead. So I'm ready to work in white for round two. So there we go. So now for round two, we're just going to increase all the way around. And that will get us up to 12 single crochets at the end of the round. So for the first few, I'm going to work over both of the tails just to, again, secure them in place. So that's uh, the end of round two and I've got my 12 single crochets all the way around. I'm going to cut these tails because I've crocheted over them. Get rid of those. Then I'm going to cut my white yarn, leaving a tail long enough for sewing. Okay, and then to increase the neatness, we're going to finish off with a fake single crochet as well. So I'll show you how to do that next. So to finish off with the fake single crochet, you're going to turn your work skip the next single crochet go into the one after that pull the white yarn tail through then go back to that final single crochet from round two in the closest loop to us currently so this one and just pull that yarn tail through again and as you can see that's created a fake single crochet on top of the actual real single crochet underneath but it just makes it a lot harder to tell where the round ended so you're going to want to make two eyes and once you've got your two eyes come back and i'll show you how to sew them to the face i've sewn down this eye I'm going to do the other one with you now so i'm just going to be whip stitching around in exactly the same way as we've been sewing other pieces down so far so i'm just going to be working my way around the eye like this I 
so I'll meet you when I've sewn all the way around. So I've sewn the eye down, I'm just going to weave the yarn tail through the eye and then cut that. So now you're going to want to grab your black embroidery thread and we're going to add the mouth and then also some eyelashes if you're doing pink badger as well. I'm going to start off with the mouth because that's relevant to both of these. So I'm going to make it a couple of rows below the eyes. I think that's the kind of size of smile that I'm looking for. So then what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a dab of glue to this part here in a second just to keep it in a smiling position. But I'm going to add a couple of extra black lines as well to either side of the mouth. So I added an additional little black line on this side. I'm going to do the other side with you now. So I'm just going to move my yarn tail to roughly the right position. So somewhere roughly here. And I'm just going to go back through the mouth just like that I'm going to bring this side out a little bit more so that it matches I think that's fine then when you're happy with it as i mentioned before you're probably going to want to add a dab of glue to make sure the mouth stays in a smiling position so i'm just going to get my fabric glue add a little dab of it here and then press the embroidery thread into that like this so just press it gently and give that a little bit of time just to um, set in place before you do anything else. But if you've got your pink badger, if you're making pink badger rather than blue badger, then you're going to want to keep your embroidery thread on the yarn needle because we can use that to do the eyelashes next. So while the mouth is drying, I'm going to add my eyelashes. So I'm going to do three on each eye. Okay, so something that looks roughly like that I'm going to try and replicate that on the other eye now as well I've got the eyelashes on both sides now so I just wanted to show you that and again I'm just going to be weaving my embroidery thread through the body I'll probably do it a few more times and this tail as well and then snip it but that should be um, all that we need to use the embroidery thread for so this is where we start to have a bit more difference in terms of what we're going to be making for the pink badger versus the blue badger. So what we're going to make now is we're going to make these strips um, of yarn that for the blue badger are going to be two belts. So you're going to need to make these in dark brown and you're going to need to make two of them. But for the pink badger, obviously I haven't made it yet, so I can't show you, but it's going to be more like a sash and it's going to be um, sewn on this way round rather than this way round. And there's only going to be one of them and it's going to be made in white. So I just thought I'd mention that to you now so that it's hopefully not too confusing. But I'm going to show you how to make the piece um, and I'm going to remind you again the differences in making it in the blue badger versus the pink badger so i'm doing pink badger so i'm going to start off with my white if you're using if you're doing blue badger sorry then you're going to want to use your dark brown for this and what i'm going to do is i'm going to start off by chaining 15 so it's worked exactly the same um for both the badgers three four five six seven eight nine ten 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Then what you're going to do is you're going to slip stitch along the chain. So starting from that second chain from hook, you can either work into these front loops like this and do a slip stitch like that. Or you can work into the back loops like I 
intend to do and you can do the exact same thing but in the back loops so just doing a slip stitch so we're going to work 14 across I'm not going to work over that tail because um, it doesn't really work with slip stitches. Okay, so that's that. You're just going to cut your yarn, leaving a tail for sewing. And so if you're doing the pink badger, then you can stop here. This is all you need. If you're doing the blue badger, just make another one of these in dark brown as well so that you've got two. So I've pinned the sash down for the pink badger and I'm going to be doing a running stitch this time to sew this down. So I'll show you how I do that and I'm going to be doing it all the way around the piece. Now, if you're making the blue badger, you just want to pin one of the dark brown pieces in the opposite direction of how we've done it on the pink badger and then you want to pin the other one along the bottom like this and you're going to sew both of those down again using a running stitch so obviously because i'm doing the pink badger now i'll show you how i sew this part down so i'll start it off with you now so i'm going to go through a pink loop or one of the body loops i should say back through a body loop and then through the white loops then I'm going to go white to body. Then I'm going to go body to white. I'm just going to repeat that all the way around the piece until I get back to where I started. I finished sewing the sash down, so I'm just going to weave my yarn tail through the body and the other tail as well, because obviously there's this tail that we weren't able to crochet over that we need to get rid of too there we go so if you're doing blue badger you should be finished now because you will have sewn down the belt pieces and that is it for blue badger so hopefully you've got something that looks like this now if you're doing pink badger we've just got one final thing to do and that is to make the bow that we're going to be sewing here so grab your hot pink yarn and let's finish off with that the bow is going to be worked in rows so we're going to start off by doing our foundation chain of five Then for row one, we're just going to single crochet across the chain. Again, I'm going to be working into the back bumps as normal. And I am going to crochet over the tail this time. Okay, so that's row one complete. Then for row two, chain one, turn, decrease across. Row three, chain one, turn, decrease. Row four, chain one, turn, increase. Row five, chain one, turn, increase across. Then finally, row six, chain one, turn, single crochet across. OK, 
Okay, so that is the main bow complete. You're now gonna cut your yarn leaving quite a long tail because we're gonna need to use that to wrap around the middle of the bow as well as sewing the bow down to the head. I've probably left way too much actually, but um, yeah, I'd rather be safe than sorry. And I'm also gonna cut this little tail here. So now I'm gonna show you how to uh, tidy up the middle of the bow and then we're just gonna pin this and sew this to the head. So I've put my yarn on my needle. I'm gonna thread the yarn through to where the middle of the bow is. So roughly here. And then I'm gonna wrap around a few times. You can do as many as you want. I think four is going to be enough for me. And then once you've done it enough times, you're just going to knot your um, yarn tail to kind of keep all of that in place. And you want to knot it at the back of the bow so that this bit isn't visible. So I'm just going to do that now. And then I'm going to knot into the this part of the bow as well. So once you're happy with that, then you can just pin the bow down to the head just above the eye here. And then we're going to sew that down now. I think I'm just going to sew the middle part down. I'm not going to bother sewing the ends down because I kind of want the bow to look like it's um, 3D and not just flat to the head. So I'm just going to try my best to sew down some of these stitches at the back. I'm probably just going to whip stitch because this won't be visible. You can do it however you would like. You could even use some glue if you wanted to. But I'm just going to be solely sewing it down. just do one more and that will be secure enough I think okay so I'm just gonna take the pin out and try wiggling that around a bit might do one more just to secure it even further and yet yeah, it kind of depends what you're going to do with this if someone's going to be like actually using this then you might want to sew that part down a little bit more at the sides just to make it a bit more secure but if you're just going to be displaying this then that is probably um sufficiently sewn down so i'm just going to weave the yarn tail through to the back of the head and then cut that and then we'll be done Okay, so that is pink badger complete. I'll show you a better view of both the pink and blue badgers now and that will be the end of the tutorial. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys. Just thought I'd show you what my completed pink and blue badgers look like. So yeah, as I already said, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.